Oh, well, here's this week's box. I partially opened it at work, forgetting that I was going to open it for y'all. Oops. Yeah, that's not too often. There's only three things in here. Complete collection of Needless on Blu-ray, which I got because uh, I had I did not buy the two-part releases of Needless. So there we go. I no longer need to buy those. This one comes on only three discs. We've got the fourth season of Hetalia. Yes, it, it's a. That's not the only thing you're going to like about this week's update. And for those viewers confused, I do have company over. It's kind of closely related to um, not doing inside the box this week. So we've got the standard bandana yellow one this time, which have they all said Funimation? Hmm. And then we've got the DVD itself. Which is in its pretty stereotypical format. Now I think about it, I don't know all those individuals in the back. I should watch it and catch up. We've got a Hidamari Sketch SP, which is a uh, specials. Two OVA specials. I don't know how much I paid for it, but I don't know. Y'all know me. I'm crazy enough to pay for anything, right? How appropriate that we have a swimsuit person on the inside, given that it's hot out right now and everything else in the house is swimsuity because all the calendars updated for July. Oh, we've also got Lupin the Third, the complete first TV series. <laughs> yes, I told you there would be other things here you'd like. This one's actually been here for a while. It wasn't in that box, of course. I just haven't opened it because there's no rush. The, the media server's full. And until I take care of the car stuff that I mentioned in previous videos, I'm not going to worry about upgrading the media server until... And I hate it when these stickers don't come all the way off on the first go. But there we go. And this, I'm actually really interested in checking this out because I did watch the first disc of the second series. And it pretty much assumed you already knew the characters. So uh, now I get to watch the one where maybe they introduce the characters. That's actually what makes it exciting. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Anohana, the, the other NIS release for the month, I think. And... Uh, I've actually, I've actually already watched this. It was pretty good. So as usual, it comes with a stereotypical NIS book. With neat pictures and text. And then we've got our two cases, which have both the Blu-ray and the DVD discs in each. This is another NIS DVD Blu-ray release. Other than that, uh, I guess I did pick up Shadow of the Colossus today, but that's not a DVD and that's not an anime DVD, so we can stop there with uh, this week's not too bad addition to the collection. So I'm actually going to do my anime analysis in this part of the video as opposed to a separate video because I'm skipping inside the box and there's only like four things on there, and there's only one of those things I can really talk a lot about. Um, so, the stuff I did watch this week, first of all, there was Towa no Kwan, assuming I pronounced that right. Overall, that was an interesting series of movies. I believe it was fairly complete in terms of what it covered. Um, and I can't think of anything about it that necessarily would be bad. It was just... I don't know, entertaining. It kind of reminded me a bit of 
the old fashioned sort of stuff. I kind of felt this vibe of Toward the Terra or um, Giver while watching it. But the character design of uh, the main character actually reminded me more of uh, this ugly yet beautiful world. Which is not really strange, but overall, it's a kind of a interesting anime version of X Men sort of story with a very Giverish sort of twist, I guess. Or it's also a lot like a anything about persecuted subtly different humans with powers sort of thing. The X-Men or Toward the Terror, like I mentioned before. Uh, I think I mentioned last week that I started peeking at Gun Sword Son, and I finished it, and I don't know if I have anything to necessarily say about it, but it was uh, intriguing. A lot of amusing things that happened, but it's... It was just a real rush of very random things, so hard to remember a lot of it from context. But an amusing watch nonetheless. Uh, Anno Hannah is the really big one to talk about because that was a completely new watch this week, and I think I have some very interesting things to say about it. For starters, you know, it's rated pretty high, and I was kind of worried going into it that, you know, there's always that chance that maybe I don't like it, because I didn't know what it was about. I, I like watching an anime without even having no context what it's about, because then the surprise is uh, kind of interesting when you watch it, and you're like, oh, well, I thought it was something about something completely different from the title. That's neat. That's not... I can't always do that, but that's what Anohana was like for me. I kind of knew it was a people interacting sort of thing, but beyond that, no idea. So... I think I'll try and keep that general idea um, separate and instead talk about the thing about it that I found interesting and probably not spoilerific to talk about. And that's a. Uh, when it started, there were definitely some things that a lot of the characters did that made me angry, and others which are just like. they're not really all that respectable or neat people there. It's kind of like it, it. it's intentionally designed with a bunch of flawed people and that ended up not being a problem. I mean, I mean y'all have heard me complain before about things where it's like they're just not trying, but this wasn't they weren't trying. They were they were actually kind of trying to address a lot of those concepts. It's, so they, they were doing these in a more self-aware way where the anime and the characters kind of knew that these were problems with that they were dealing with it's a it's about role the various roles these people had and how they dealt with the situation that the anime is pretty much about but it also you know tried to make it about a personal growth sort of thing if you sympathize with any of the characters you may actually find that um it, it, by the end of the show i actually appreciated all of the characters and you can almost say that that's kind of Neon Genesis Evangelion. One of the things I'd like to speculate about that one is we liked it so much back then because all the characters were so humanly flawed. And one of the reasons that people like the original um, episode 25 and 26 ending to Evangelion is because that one signaled a very significant character growth for the main character of Evangelion. A sorely needed one. And, while well, I don't think that Anna Hannah did anything on that level of character growth. I think it still did it in a way that probably hits at a more reasonable level. And at the same time, it tell, told a really touching story that, well, I think it came to a... Yeah, I think it developed and came to really good end, the way it went. My feelings on that one are kind of unsure, probably because at some point I realized it was trying to pull at my emotional strings in a kind of key-esque way. So you could almost think of it like Angel Beats in a way, where a part of me knew, you know, th this thing I'm not laughing at is something that for all intents and purposes, I can't think of why it's not funny because it's the most hilarious thing I've ever thought about. 
And I don't know what that disconnect is, if it's just me watching too much stuff or the state of mind I'm in when I'm watching certain parts of things. Hard to say. But Anaheim, I thought it was a very satisfying watch. Very nice, to the point one. Not, not, not like rushed or anything, but to the point. It, it had a story it was trying to tell. Other than that, the only other thing that I watched that I'm going to talk about, since I don't want to talk about um, Midget Gary Oldman, or which was not an anime, of course, and um, two episodes of Cowboy Bebop, which uh, is enough to talk about, I watched the uh, second Gurren Lagann movie. Well, we watched it. I've seen it a couple of times. And this time I finally picked up that the interesting changes that I remembered from it, part of them worked in this movie simply because of one or two new additional scenes earlier on that I had never caught. In fact, there seems to be a whole lot of new scenes in this one simply because it was the only way they could um, tie all of the narrative together. Now, overall, I actually like the ending to the series more in the second movie than in the series. And I, I've seen opinions on the Reddit anime subreddit where some people thought the movie went too overboard. And maybe I just have a high tolerance for that sort of thing. But I guess the reason I like the movie version more is... Well, it, that one's hard to explain completely without spoiling it. So I'm not going to try and do that. But I can say that there's a lot more emotion going on. And when you get down to it, the final battle at the very end of the series, it works because there's a lot more emotion in the actors' voices, both on all sides of the spectrum. Everybody's just putting a lot more emotion in there. And the, the changes that are made to it just make that final battle a real clashing of um, spirits of um, uh, just it's just, just an awesome clash that was part of what made it so spectacular in the first place in the series and I think the movie kind of ironed that out and got it to ju just a real it just perfected the concept as far as I'm concerned I kind of have trouble going back and watching the version of the first series but Obviously, other people have different opinions. I guess uh, the whole feeling like it went overboard thing. But yeah, there you go. That's about it. That's uh, all the anime I watched. I know that uh, I still have yet to watch From Up on Poppy Hill, even though I paid like 50 or $60 to import it from Japan. But I keep meaning to get around to that. It's just busy things. And uh, same old deal with the car. Um, regarding imports from Japan, and, uh, I think I mentioned last week that I import, I placed an order for the Black Rock Shooter TV Series Limited Edition Blu-ray release. Now, somebody commented on my channel but deleted it before I had a chance to go on and reply and say that he had a really good point. But they were pointing out that it doesn't have English subtitles, which I think is actually very likely to be the case because sites like CD Japan do not indicate any subtitles at all. The reason why I ordered it is because Amazon Japan thinks there's subtitles, and I'm guessing that listing got copied to the US Amazon Japan when that listing was made here, and it may be an error. So, I'm still okay with getting it. It just means I probably shouldn't try and pay twice the asking price if I can help it. Mostly because, you know, there's that chance that it doesn't have English subtitles and I wouldn't be able to watch it. But it's still worth it for two reasons. One is that it comes with that really kick-ass figure that everybody's been talking about. And the other is that if I do get it and it doesn't have English subtitles, that may be a good motivation for me to finally learn um, <clears throat> Japanese, at least on a spoken level. And that's important because um, at some point in the future, my... Uh, brother and his wife are going to move to Japan, and in interacting with them, it may be useful to know Japanese, if I ever go there. But I have to get a passport before I can leave the country, so... Uh, for some reason, learning Japanese sounds easier, probably because I don't have to leave the home to do that. It just is harder if I don't leave the home, but... Oh, well, that's the whole complicated thing, so... I haven't seen anywhere that 
definitely says no English subtitles, so a lot of places seem to be just taking it for granted. But whenever I do get my copy, that's going to be one thing I'm definitely going to confirm whether or not it has English subtitles, and the expectation is that it doesn't, but for some reason somebody thought it did, and they're probably wrong, but I'll make sure. So there we go. That's uh, my anime update, my anime analysis, all in one video. So, y'all have a nice week, and, uh, and a nice 4th of July, too. And I watched Independence Day in Japanese, and it was hilarious. Bye.